I'd like to introduce John Schaefer. Uh, he's a heavy metal guitarist, songwriter, founder of the you know massive band Iced Earth. It's been around 27 years. And uh, yeah, and, and John, I actually found, uh, I mean, I've been known about Iced Earth for a long time, but I actually was listening to Sirius Metal Radio and heard this song about Jekyll Island. I, or I heard the song, I was like, hey, cool song. And then the lyrics were all about Jekyll Island. And, you know, I was working on the movie and I was like, what is this? And <laughs> <laughs> so that's my introduction to Sons of Liberty was, uh, you know, is that you, you were already on the, um, you know, relatively mainstream radio. Uh, so, um, you know, I looked more and more into it and, you know, I, not only do you run, the, you know, a top metal band and, you know, an awesome guitar player, but you're well-spoken, you're a scholar, you're a writer, you're a patriot. Uh, and uh, so I'm pleased to have you on with us. This is exciting. Well, thanks, man. I'm I'm, uh, I'm excited to talk to you. I'm excited our, that we're forming this alliance here against the tyrants. It's good good stuff. It's good to use these mediums to uh, try to wake people up and snap them out of the trance. Yeah. So, so John, I, what what led you to come to focus on liberty and 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 to you know, to focus on on the Federal Reserve? That's pretty unique. Well, I was, um, you know, I, I was walking around in a trance as well. You know, most of my life and. And uh, on the hamster wheel, focused, have blinders on, working on my career, focusing purely on iced earth and moving it forward and trying to make it as successful as possible. And never given myself a break. And believing in the American, the founding ideals my whole life, but then also being a victim of propaganda because the system throws up that those values are still there. And, and I didn't know the history of the Federal Reserve System, and I never really questioned it. You know, I, I knew um, I knew about, uh, you know, the, the issues with the banking system in the very beginning of the country, but I actually was foolish enough to think that the Federal Reserve was part of the Treasury and it was, le- you know, a legitimate institution. You know, I just didn't, I was working, you know what I mean? Just focusing on, yeah, like, yeah. like we all get trapped in that, in that, in that, that way of life. And so anyway, um, I was totally exhausted. I mean, just, you know, I'd never taken any vacation time in my adult life. Nothing to speak of. Maybe two or three weeks, that's literally it in, you know, 25 years. And so I was, we were on, had a big European tour, and I was absolutely at the end of my rope, man. I was just fried. <clears throat> so I called, called my wife and said, hey, you know, find a place. I don't care where it is, but make sure it's quiet. No cell phones, no computers, no nothing. For a month, I need to decompress. So I went to an island in the Caribbean and uh, just hung out at, at a place where there's hardly any people and just my family and I, and I really started to come alive and feel good after a while. I thought at first it was just because I was exhausted, but it really was it was different than that. you know. I mean, I, And then I got back home from that trip, and I was feeling great and ready to go, and then I, uh, the Mayak report was leaked, mm-hmm. and and then when I when I read through that and saw that, you know, that this whole this whole government, you know, targeting patriots and Christians and gun owners and ex-military and Ron Paul supporters and, you know, running down the list, libertarians, constitutionalists, I'm going, what the hell's going on here? You know, this is that's everybody I care about fits that description, in one way or the other, and and then when I found out that it was drafted under Bush but leaked under Obama, then I said, you know, because the whole thing, the whole TARP thing was creeping me out, and I was really angry about that as well. But it was like that really, But I think the vacation, the getting out of the matrix for a while, really trying to reconnect with my humanity, and then, then, uh, and, and then coming back and seeing that report, I got angry, and I started researching. And... You know, I, I, then I came across the film. Uh, actually, a Navy SEAL buddy of mine, his girlfriend, sent me the link to the Zeitgeist Addendum. And, you know, I don't agree with their... I, I think I wouldn't be surprised if, if at some level that was a co-opted situation, maybe even engineered by the global elite. I don't know, because I don't like the, the idea of this collective, you know, solution to anything. I don't believe in right, collectivism. Right. I believe in individuality. But <clears throat> anyway... Uh, but they did provide some good information in there. And, and the, the thing that blew my mind was, you know, learning about the fractional reserve banking from that film. At first, I just had a hard time believing that it was true. And all of my other research led me to believe that it is true. The Federal Reserve 
is a criminal institution um, and way too secret for the for the uh, the good of the American people. And then, and then you look at the whole um, it's 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 horrible for the world. Actually, it's not just bad for the American people; it's bad for the world. And you know, so I I really just started digging in, and uh, and that's when you know I had my epiphany and what I call my awakening, and it you know it, it hit me like a ton of bricks at first, but you know it also motivated me in a big way to stand up and get involved because I've always had this fascination with the the founding of the country and especially the American Revolution period. It's always resonated with me, even when I was a small child. You know, it's what I, I couldn't get enough books when I, when I learned how to read. I couldn't get enough books about, you know, uh, Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson and Washington and all those guys. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. I've, I've had this man crush on Thomas Jefferson since, since I don't remember when. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, um, yeah, it's amazing. I've always been really interested in what that uh, whole period. And, and they, you know, I know the guys weren't perfect. I mean, I know yeah, that. Yeah. But I also know that there's the system and the, a lot of the academia have, uh, openly try to demonize and twist them into something to make us drift further away from what we're what this whole thing is supposed to be about. Um, so, so, so you've talked about how the American Revolution was actually based um, on a fight against the monetary system of the Bank of England, uh, you know, and that's not what we usually hear. We usually, you know, hear about tea and taxes and that kind of thing. So, can you tell me more about uh, about that? About how uh, Bank of England was was big motivator for the American Revolution, the first American Revolution. Yeah, it was the levying of the debt from the French and Indian War on the colonies, and the colonists were, I mean, the, 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 only, the only thing that benefited was the British Empire. It wasn't the colonists, really, you know. Um, and so, but, then, but they were under the guise of, hey, we were keeping you secure, keeping you safe. You have to pay taxes to pay off the war debt, you know, and we know that the the banksters are the, the real puppet masters anyway, no matter who sits on the throne. I think it was Roth, one of the Rothschilds said that, right? Right. You know, whoever sits on the throne controls nothing. I control the money. I control everything. So, you know, that's, the, that's their, their view. And, so that, and then, you know, you, you read uh, um, uh, about the fact that – and, and look, there were traitors amongst the founders as well. And I, so it's not like when I say the founders, it's, it's sort of – I guess it's a little bit dangerous to say that – that in a broad stroke that, that they were all great and amazing because they weren't. I mean, I, I'm not a fan of Alexander Hamilton. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think he deserved his fate. And, but, you know, if, if you look at guys like Roger Sherman, for instance, and that really, you know, this whole idea of gold and silver coin and how that is truly makes a man independent, um, it, it's, you know, it, that's, this is the root of it because the monetary system is the – tool of domination by the global elite over the people. If we had honest money and sound money that took effort, you know, to like gold and silver to get out of the ground to manufacture, you know, it's not just a printing press going crazy and uh, expanding government and war and welfare and the whole thing. You know, I, I think it's the, the roots are there. And I think that's what this, um, this revolution needs to be, you know, the American people, and, and I'm, I was one of them. I've educated myself to learn why we're in such a mess that we're in. And the, the, Amer the American people need to do that. We need to reconnect with the founding principles, and we have to educate ourselves about the most important issue. The thing that causes and creates the big problems in our, in our world is the creation of money, credit, and circulation mm -hmm. and how it works. I mean, it's a big deal. And People just take it for granted and don't think about the, you know, it's, the. It's absolutely essential. I mean, it drives everything else. It uh, drives the wars. Drives the, uh, you know, drives the politics. It's just, um, it's fundamental. And I believe that that's what the Civil War was was really about as well. And you know that you just there's there's uh, I mean it, there was manipulation going on clearly because the the British Empire wanted to to break up the Union. Um, and they were manipulating both sides. But I think if you go down to a base level to, at the hearts of the people, it was really, you know, the Southerners were saying this is our second war of independence. You know, that's the way they looked at it. Unfortunately, it didn't, it didn't turn out very well. You know, and, and I'm not talking about the, the issue of slavery. I don't believe there, that any of us should be slaves. And we just went from one form of slavery into another. You know, this is, it's a financial slavery, and this, does, this knows no color 
of skin. It doesn't have anything to do with that. No, not at all. And yeah. so, you know, the, the people, you know, I hope people don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not into slavery whatsoever. I believe in human liberty completely, whole, wholeheartedly, regardless of race, religion, creed. That means nothing to me, you know. <clears throat> so that's really the, um, I guess, for me, you, you know, the, the, the revolution starts within us, all of us. You know, it's got to start, we've got to reconnect with our humanity, snap out of the matrix, turn off the damn television, stop listening to the corporate-controlled media, and really do the research, use our power of discernment to start to put into focus what's really going on, how much the deception's just off the charts. And I, I really believe that things would, if we had honest money, um, I believe that, yes, there's going to be a, a difficult correction period, but I don't think it's going to take as long as people think. I think, you know, if, if in a very quick way, we would start to see things fall into place. I really believe that. What are you hearing from the fans? Well, I mean, you know, I start, the Sons of Liberty is clearly something different than I start. The, I mean, the, the uh, unifying factor between the two is that I wrote all of it and, played the guitars on it and on Sons of Liberty I sung lead vocals also and it's just you know it, so it, there's definitely that element there and then live the guys in the band helped me out even though they didn't play on the record well Troy played a couple guitar solos but um, you know it's so I didn't really try to cross it into each other too much like as far as the press goes and that kind of thing and, and um, you know it's Sons of Liberty has developed into its own thing I was really shocked at at the response, I wasn't sure how Iceter fans were going to take it because I figured that knowing the music journalists and the press the way that I do, they would look at it as some, you know, right wing extremism kind of thing, which it is clearly not if you just pay attention and do some, do some right. fact checking. It's clearly but, different, yeah. Yeah, but, <clears throat> you know, that's that, for some reason you get these people that just in the, in the metal community, the rock community, punk or whatever, and they just seem to love the state. And and they, it's like, what the fuck are you rebelling against? You know, don't you realize that's the issue? You know, it, it's what I don't I don't get it. You know, they 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 complain about it, the wars and everything, but then they look to the state for solutions, and it makes zero sense to me. The state is the problem; it always has been. Yeah, there's nothing punk about a big government. I mean, right. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's the, one of the great. I mean, I was, that's one of my questions. It's sort of like, what are they talking about? I don't get it, dude. I never have. Actually, I don't get it whatsoever. And I think it's a, I think it just goes to show how strong the propaganda is that we're all up against. And nobody likes to feel like they've been fooled. You know, and we're not talking about conspiracy theory here. We're talking about conspiracy fact. And it's time for the patriots around the world, people that love liberty and want to be free, to start recognizing this. When Sons of Liberty, like going out and playing live, I wasn't sure how they were going to, the people were going to react to it. But I was talking to them a lot between the songs, and some, you know, some people were mouthing off, they're drunk, and they're like, yeah, blah, 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 whatever. But the overwhelming majority of people were, like, going crazy. And it's not normal for a, a support band to sell 45 or 50 percent of the merchandise, and we did. You know? awesome. And I realize it's me. It's, uh, there's people from Ice Earth that were following, and following my, my personal things, whatever I do, whether it's Demons and Wizards or Sons of Liberty or whatever. <clears throat> but... Still, that was a pretty strong showing, and um, and it shows that if it's if the message is delivered to a people in a common sense way, where they can kind of get their head around it, um, then I think it it wakes them up, and it, at least on a minimum at a minimum makes them start investigating. And look, I'm begging for somebody to prove me wrong about the things that I'm saying. I mean, I I pray for it every day, <laughs> but I know they can't because I don't know. I know very few people that have dedicated the kind of time into doing the research that I have. I mean, there are some, and I'm meeting more all the time, and it's, they're, they're the, you know, the, the libertarians, the people in that movement out there, the real patriot movement. So they're out there. But, I mean, it, you know, the, the vast majority of people just turn on the television, and they think that's reality. And that's, that's perception. It's not reality. Right, it's you totally know, different. It's, there's little slivers of reality in there with a bunch of lies and a bunch of manipulation. And it's, you can't, pe good people can't make good decisions or, or, or come up with good opinions or, or make good judgment calls if they're 
being fed bullshit information. Don't check on.